are in the basement with Tim Ross. Since I'm solo today, um, there was a couple of thoughts that I had, and this is what I love about um, this podcast, is I get to talk about stuff that I don't get to talk about in the pulpit. So I told Juliet before I got here, the first thing I wanted to talk about was Disney+. Plus. And really, Disney, not, not Disney+, Plus is like their subscription thing. like, But just D- Disney as a whole. So um, who, who didn't grow up on Disney, right? Walt Disney is like one of the most creative, innovative visionaries that has ever walked planet Earth, right? I mean, he took a rat and gave him a kingdom. Um, if there is... If there is not, if there's if there's one person that could preach the whole gospel, it'd be Walt Disney in the kingdom that he created, right? I mean, it's literally what God's trying to do with the earth, right? It's to build a kingdom, right? To take a man and build a kingdom, right? So, I mean, Walt Disney gave us Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Pluto and Donald Duck and Daisy and... Oh, man, some of the most iconic franchises this side of heaven. Um, Then they became a conglomerate and just bought out Marvel, bought out Pixar. Sheesh. I mean, the strength of these people. I think, like, more than 50% of, like, all movie revenue was connected to Disney. Like, in the last year or two, I mean, they're freaks of nature. There's some lessons to be learned in that, right? Anyway, um, they came out with a movie. Uh, my, my friend Jelani Lewis. Jelani Lewis has, like, some of the yummiest babies you'll ever meet in your entire life. Him and his wife, Erin, made, like, the most beautiful babies you'll ever meet. And he, uh, last week, I was talking to him on the phone, and he was, he was on his way to a movie, right? He's on his way to a movie. He's like, listen, I'm about to go see a movie. He didn't even tell me what the movie was. I'm taking my kids to a movie. It's summertime, of course. A good dad's going to take their kids to a movie. So he's like, he gets to the movie, he's like, we're having a juicy conversation too. So that, that this needs to be said. We're having a great conversation. Jelani is like the younger brother everybody wants. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's just a great man, loves Jesus, um, loves his wife, loves his kids. And he's just an all around like one of the coolest dudes I've ever met in life. Every time I, anytime I get on the phone with him, it's like B12 intravenously fed into my veins. Like, I love this dude. So, uh... He goes, to, you know, we have to get off the phone. He goes to the movies. 35 minutes later, he calls me back. I'm like, bruh, what movie is this? Like, are you done? He's, I mean, he's in the car, too. Like, brrr, I mean, he's driving. I can hear, you can hear the road noise, right? He is gone. So I'm like, dude, um, what's up? And he's like, bro, we had to lead a movie, man. I said, what happened? He was like, bro, we went to go see Lightyear. And there is there is a there is a wedding in in like in the first ten minutes of the movie, two women get married and they kiss. It's the first time it's happened in an animated film in the history of animation, right? So there you go, Disney. You just you know what I mean. You made history, right? And so he's like, and his kids are young, right? I don't think he has any children that are double digits. His kids are young. So now he's like, now I got to go home and have this conversation because two women kissed. Two cartoon women kissed at the movies. And so I, the, the, what was interesting is the, the, the day before, I had actually read an article on um, Associated Press just rating the movie because I wanted to take Nathan and Noah to go see the movie. And um, in the rating of the movie, they talked about, you know, it's the first LGBTQIA. That's all the letters right now that I know of, LGBTQIA. But there's a plus as well. So, um, um, and of course, it's Associated Press, so it wasn't like I was reading Christianity Today. You know what I mean? They were just saying, it's the first thing, you know, first animated series, you know, two women, blah, blah, blah. So I knew it, but then when he told me, it like it just didn't register. When I read it, I'm like, well, it's the world. So, um, okay, Tim, why would you want to bring that up today? Why are we bringing that up in the basement? Well, you know, Christians are funny people to me. Like I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very um, intrigued by 
all things Christianity and culture, which is why the basement exists, right? We get to talk about all things Christianity and culture. I don't have a, obviously, you know, Jelani leaving the movies. Yeah, his kids are young and, and, and he's a believer in Jesus Christ. And he, that's not the, I don't, I'm, I'm sure that's not the way he wanted to introduce the conversation of homosexuality to his kids. It's two cartoons kissing, right? <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Somebody painstakingly drawing two cartoons kissing, two women kissing. Um, but then the outrage uh, from the Christian community um, and I'm talking about like the vocal outrage of like, can't stand Disney. Disney's the devil. Is Disney the devil? I don't think Disney's the devil. I also have never heard Disney proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And so I assume when people don't proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, that they're probably unbelievers in Jesus, which probably mean that their hearts are unregenerated, which probably means they're not led by the Holy Spirit, which probably means they're led by whatever they're feeling at the time because they're not submitted to a governor. So I just imagine people that are in their sins, sinners, sin actively because that's what they are. I'm not outraged at Disney, right? D D Disney's been consistent with Disney. Disney already had shows on their channel that had gay characters, characters that were coming out, teenage characters that were coming out. So... The outrage is shocking to me. I, I'm amazed that Christians are surprised that unbelievers act ungodly and do stuff that's incongruent with Scripture. I'm, a, I'm not shocked at Disney. I'm shocked at the response of Christians to Disney. This, this is not VeggieTales. Walt Disney didn't create VeggieTales. He created a, a rodent. <laughs> and... All the people that have come after Disney, you got all kinds. Of, you got straight people and, and gay people and bi people and tri people and pansexual people and asexual people. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of people living their life. They made a movie. They wanted to put some gay characters in it. And they got tired to alluding to it. Like they did in other ones, like Luca, right? It's kind of suspect gay. And then when they did Beauty and the Beast and tried to tell us, hey, that guy actually is into this dude, but that's as far as we're going to go. It's 2022. They're like, you know what, fam? We're about to make these chicks kiss, right? They're going to say, I do, and it's going to be lovely. They're going to raise a child. It's going to be beautiful. Okay, that's where we are. All right, Christian America, everybody, are we all good? This is where we are. The, the cartoons are now kissing. Same sex, different sex, hetero, homo, it's all out there. It's all legal. What is my response? My response is I'm not going to give them my $14.32 or $32. And I'm not supporting the movie. I'm also not writing a blog about it. <laughs> I'm also not going to put a picket sign in front of Disneyland. Right. And be like, can't believe you guys have gay characters in your films. What else do you expect from some people that don't have Jesus Christ in your life? Low key. Let's not forget that there are some people that profess Jesus that are on the down low. There was uh, some some friends of mine that were asking on Instagram saying that one of the potential problems could be is exposing their kids so young to such a thing as homosexuality. Yeah. So they wanted to ask, like, in your life, how have you gone about that with your kids? And, spe like, specifically, like, this scenario, I assume oh, they for already sure. know about it. They so. do. Oh, yeah. I put my kids on at 12 and 10. And I would have put them on younger. Juliet was just like, I don't feel like having that conversation right now. I had the, the sex talk with my boys at 12 and 10. Juliet and I did it at the same time. 
Nathan was sitting to my right. Noah was sitting in Juliet's lap. Uh, my friend from Australia uh, wrote a wrote a book for uh, kids that hit puberty, and uh, it's an illustrated book. Um, and so it has, you know, penises and vaginas in there, and it talks about erections and and puberty and hair growing places and all the stuff, right? And um, then then we had to like I had to tell my sons how they came into the world, right? I put my penis in your mom's vagina and I left it there for a long time. This, this is le- quote unquote, this is literally what I told them, right? <laughs> like They got me as a dad, so you know what I mean? And so Nathan and Noah are mortified. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I- I'm so sorry. What are you talking about? Like, you know how you, you know, you're young and you got a little stiffy, right? And you don't know what to do with it. Or you get in the shower and the warm water gives a little sensation, and you're like, oh, what is that? You're discovering your penis. Every kid is discovering, every boy is discovering their penis between eight and 12 years old, right? They're experimenting, and, and oh, it feels good if I touch it, all that kind of stuff. All this stuff is normal, okay? So, but, but I gotta tell them, like, I put my penis in your mom's vagina, and I left it there for a long time, and then you came out, right? This semen came out of me and went into your mom's vagina, and she had an ovulating egg, and you won, champ, right? Your sperm cell hit that egg and you became you, right? God wanted you in the earth and here you are. And um, I broke it down to him and then um, told him about, and then, you know, uh, and because, you know, some kids think that the only time their parents had sex is when they were conceived. And so I also had to let them know, I still put my penis in your mom's vagina. Y'all need to know that. Up until this day, it's still happening. So don't think it only happened twice, fam. When y'all go to bed, we don't. <laughs> so um, that was cool. and um, But then we also had to start talking to them about homosexuality. And, and I told them there are some people out there that have a same-sex attraction. I said, here's what I want you to know. Same-sex attraction is not a sin. It's not from Genesis to Revelation. You can't find one verse that says attraction is a sin. It's the practice, right? It's the reaction. First of all, let's go in order. Uh, Attraction is not a sin, period, which means same sex, sex, uh, sex attraction can't be a sin. If attraction is not a sin, then same sex attraction cannot be a sin. Our reactions to our attractions can become a sin, homo or hetero, right? I, Juliet's beautiful. She ain't the only beautiful woman in the world. Right? So if I see another beautiful woman, my attraction to that other woman is not a sin. My reaction to that attraction could definitely become a sin. Right? And if I sleep with that other woman based on my attraction, I have sinned and committed adultery and violated my vows to my wife. So so if a... If a um, If a homosexual has the same sex attraction, that's not a sin. If he or she acts on that attraction and has same sex, that is a sin, according to Scripture. What does that mean? That means only people that profess Jesus Christ as Lord and have a same sex attraction are bound by the statement that I just made. Can we just, <laughs> can we can we please stop trying to give unbelievers news that they can't handle before the good news they can handle? The good news for the unbeliever is that someone died for you and loves you no matter what you are right now, no matter what you're doing right now. That's the good news that That God loves you. Oh, but I'm a lesbian. He loves you and he wants a relationship with you. I'm gay. He loves you and wants a relationship with you. I'm queer. He loves you and wants a relationship with you. That's the only thing we have to say to anybody that's an unbeliever. I'm a crackhead. He loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. (laughs) I'm a murderer doing life in prison. He loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. That's the good news, right? Now, if you accept that good news, I got bad news. If you accept that good news, I got bad news, and here's the bad news. 
in the same way that he died for you. Now you got to die for him. And if you accept him as Lord and not just Savior, you have to die to your will. You have to die to your way. You have to die to your desires. You have to die to your agenda. And because this is a king and not a presidential candidate, we cannot rewrite the Constitution based on your feelings and your attractions. So I had the conversation with my kids. And we talked about it. And uh, they had a lot of questions. We're not afraid of any of the questions that they had. Um, the, actually, actually, the first little girl that uh, Nathan liked, um, she was bisexual. She told him, a 12-year-old girl told my son who was into her, I'm, bi I'm bisexual. He didn't even know what that meant. He was like, okay. And he was like, what is that? She was like, well, I like guys and girls. And he was like, that's double the competition. I'm so petty. Um, so so I I just feel like we need to have these conversations a as believers. You can't we shouldn't be trying to protect our children from the world. We should be giving them context to the world that they're going to be navigating. Right. Cool. You want to walk out of the Disney movie because two girls kiss. That's fine. But it's coming up in a commercial. It's going to come up in the next movie you want to watch. One of their friends in school is going to like them. So instead of, of trying to avoid it, like give them context to it, right? Like the first 22 Marvel movies, those were, th th that was our jam. Thor, God of Love and Thunder, we're not going to see it. They made, they made Valkyrie queer. It's a hard pass. I'm glad I got the first 22 movies. I'm just not going to see 24. Right? Like, I'm not about to get, oh, man, I can't believe you. You ruined the institution. No, this is the progression of people that want to be inclusive to everybody. And this their prerogative to do so. And my only choice is to withhold my dollar. Am I going to bankrupt Disney? Not at all. <laughs> I ain't, ain't enough people gonna bankrupt disney right um but if we really wanted to hurt them that's where we would hurt them it ain't gonna be the picket sign it's not gonna be your stupid blog post right this is why i stopped supporting disney don't nobody care if you made that decision just stop supporting them right so we're not going to see uh thor god of love and thunder which i think is probably gonna be a dope movie um and then we're not going to see, we didn't see Doctor Strange because I heard like the last third of that movie was like dark. I'm, I'm talking like Satan might have came, pop, popped his head up in there like I'm here. Like, you know what I mean? He might have, he might have peekabooed out of there. It's a straight up horror movie. Yeah, for sure. Really? Oh, yeah. Dude, that's like, I mean, strange and horror. It's, it gets real dark. It, it, yeah, I heard it got like super dark, bro. So, I mean... So we passed on that movie, and we told them the reason why. I mean, Nathan will be 14 soon, and um, uh, Nathan uh, and then Noah will be 12. We're not like, hey, we're not going to see that movie. This just just demonic. We just told them, hey, bro, it's straight up dark, and we're not going to support that. Thor, God of Love and Thunder, dude, they got some queer action going on in there. I don't know how far they're going to go because they just made – Two cartoons kiss. They might be tonguing each other up in there. I'm, I'm, I'm sure mommy doesn't want to see two girls lapping it up. And we don't, you know, we're, we're going to miss that movie. And they're like, cool, cool, cool. Let's play Scrabble. You, you know what I'm saying? Let, let's play Monopoly. But, but, but that's where it ends. We, got, we have to have the conviction in ourselves and for ourselves to just say, we take this stand, we draw the line here, and, and we're out. So, so I actually... Which brings me to Disney Plus, right? I canceled my subscription to Disney Plus, right? Because if this is where all of it's about to go, I'm not following y'all that way. Respect y'all, praying for y'all, 
Here's the other thing which people might not believe. Love y'all. Ooh, I love you. I just don't agree. 